some of the people maybe here maybe who are listening online might be really struggling with one parent or one partner in life or another mm -hmm. and when you want to heal a relationship do you remember when i was sharing about acceptance and understanding these are two fundamental stages to get to the point of fully feeling harmony and love with that other person for example if you're struggling with a parent and you live with them physically or with a husband you cannot heal a relationship where you're in a stage of disgust really nasty disgust you actually have to distance and I've noticed people are very reasonable they're almost at the stage of a divorce or really <laughs> punching their wife or husband it gets to that point and they're still under the same roof trying to make a relationship work and it never works like that in order to heal a relationship you got a distance and here you cannot be reasonable and say, but it's expensive to move out. Find the cheapest place, but move. Because once you are in a distance, you're gonna start feeling the energy <sighs> that you distance yourself from the toxicity, right? Or unhealthy environment. And once you're out and you start breathing, that's when you can start doing the meditation and affirmation because sometimes the relationship becomes so painful and if you're really constantly talking or visiting or constantly in a relationship, you, no matter how much you talk to this other person, it's gonna get things worse. The distance is the first stage to heal. And as you continue doing affirmation or meditation or prayer, because you cannot start running until you start first doing the affirmation and only then meditation, and then later you can do the prayer, you're gonna start feeling, oh, okay, I can stand them now. And when you feel like you can stand them, you can try 10 minutes meeting or a phone call, then 15 minutes and 20 minutes, slowly coming back, yeah? Because sometimes, three months ago, I've met a woman who is really struggling emotionally with one of her family members. And I've noticed she start calling me and leaving me messages for 25, 30 minutes, sometimes at midnight, at one o'clock in the morning, no boundaries. And I thought, wow, this is strange. I put one time boundary, ignored it, second time boundary, ignored it. And I realized that's how in the family, they cross the boundaries and that's not healthy. We gotta have boundaries and the boundaries, it first starts in a, in a distance in order to heal the relationship. And the more you're in a distance, the faster you can heal the relationship. Don't be afraid to distance yourself, yeah? And if you can, be in a separate bedrooms, hardly walking in the kitchen, grabbing something to eat upstairs and staying away, but continuing your meditation. Because again, when you, the way the destiny works, you all of a sudden see a beautiful woman, she's gorgeous, and you're like, oh, I like her, I want her. That means destiny is already kicking, that you're gonna put exam through her and she's gonna push you through hell in life. And if you look at him, he's so smart, good looking and charming, the destiny is already kicking. And I'll show you and I'll put you through hell. Because if a stranger right now tells me, one of the per people on YouTube said on one of my U on YouTube videos, on one of my lectures, trash. And I looked at the woman and I thought, of course, it's uh, radical. It's very spiritual, it's outside of the box. But it didn't trigger me. But if my husband right now tells me, your lectures are trash, it would punch me in the heart. So our destiny always works through the close people. And so the person that you're in love with gonna put you through misery and the more you're gonna surrender and accept it the faster you're gonna pass the exam and by the way the sooner you're gonna pass the exam the next one gonna show up I passed the exam with my husband guess who I'm passing exam with my seven-year-old <laughs> and my health these are the two exams that I'm passing through. And oh, let me tell you, my seven-year-old is bombarding me from all the corners. I had to negotiate to clean this corner over there and over there because the Legos and toys are everywhere for three days. But how have I have to talk to him? Is honey, can we please move? There was three tables here with toys like that, right? <laughs> whole area, <laughs> and whole area here. Can we please move it here? And the way I talk to him, and gently and kindly, 
Okay, mom, one table only. The next day I talked to him gently and softly. Okay, mom, but only to the other room. The more femininity, the more gentleness and softness I bring, because he's like alpha macho soldier, my seven-year-old, he surrenders. He's like, okay. The moment I turn on, I'm a mom. Come on, listen to me. No. <laughs> Got it. And he's my exam. And it's my responsibility to pass the exam. I cannot make my son wrong. He's seven years old. Do you get that? So I am working on me to make our relationship with the seven-year-old work so it is in harmony. But we as a human beings, typically we're like, bad one, bad one, bad one, wrong one, complain, complain, bad, bad. And that's what we're doing. And then we're not taking any responsibility to who we are because we have enormous power within us. And Vedas are saying, if you don't see that 1% of God's nature in person, your relationship will never work. Because when you see a person and you see they're greedy, uh, they're dumb, they're not intelligent, they're slow, they're lazy, all of that is a human nature in a man or a woman. That is 99% of the human nature. But if you see one percent of god's nature which is very hard to do but if you can achieve that that's when your relationship gonna work because we as a women have so much power if we see our husband loser dumb not responsible lazy irritable aggressive whatever this person becomes that and we have to be responsible for that we're not even saying that out loud that i think you're stupid and dumb and they feel already that they're stupid and dumb years ago i knew a woman she had five children and her husband was in the construction golden hands we say it in russian I don't know how you say when a man can do anything with hands. Handy. Handy. I would look at his work and the pictures. I felt like his work had to be in a museum. But because she was embarrassed that she, he was doing kind of a construction work and working with his hands and he would come muddy, little bit stinky, with greasy hair, she would literally be embarrassed of him. He's like, but he's in the construction and he makes only five, six thousand dollars a month. And it's six of us, five kids, me actually, and him, it's seven of us. We're hardly surviving. And deep in her heart, her complaint was that he's a loser. And with this thought, do you think this man has a possibility? He doesn't. And so the work that he was doing, he was making around fireplace with wood, such an artwork, either with stone, either with wood, the way he was doing the railings, it was so gorgeous, but he was charging what other people would charge, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, only 1000 only 2000 and he was perfectionist. So the thing that would anybody would take only three, four days, he would take him two, three weeks because the art that he was doing. But he was making little money because she was looking at him, he's a loser. He's a construction worker. He was not, she was not even appreciating that he's an artist, working with art, working with stone. And so we have to be responsible. How we listen to our man, how to listen to people. We're not in tune. just got present to how I used to listen to my husband that he's slow and I want to just cry it's like I first two years was listening to him that he's slow he's slow that's how nasty it was and we do that every day thinking that it's okay but it's not we're creating with our thoughts with our feelings with our aura who the close family to us. We're making everything else more important 
than our close family. Our husbands, our wives, our kids. And so going back to this three, three distinction that I was sharing about, the first is happiness and love and our desire to live with love and happiness. Second is our desire for success, knowledge. And then the third is our desire to live and not to die is that the love is not position of power. The position of power is success and knowledge. And when people have knowledge and success, it's a very po powerful position in life. But this position belongs to who? To men. And our position is to create harmony, <coughs> happiness, and love in our family. Because if a man comes home from work and wife who is success-oriented, goal-oriented, independence and money-oriented comes from work, they go head to head because they're exhausted. Because when a man comes home, he wants to relax because he was at war, bringing a baking home. And he wants to feel the love, the connection, the peace that woman creates. The aura at home is the energy of, of a woman. And a man is inspired to bring more baking home and bring more money home and be more successful if he comes home and the environment is of peace and love and harmony. And by the way, every relationship book says that man needs number one sex. Yes, men are sexual beings, they, it's important. But do you know at the core soul level, what they want more than sex because it's on the physical level? is to come home and feel this peace and love. Appreciation, peace and love. And that's what modern women are not capable of giving to a husband and a man. Because she doesn't trust him that he will provide and protect. And she's trying to provide for herself. And the more she's not trusting, and trying to provide for herself, the more she's shifting to masculine and they go head to head. Because in battery we have plus and minus and then it works. But plus and plus or minus and minus doesn't work. And in the Vedic knowledge, we're all seeking right now in the feminism move, equality which I'm 100% against, I think we're equal of importance. But at the same time, in all spiritual or religious sacred writings, it's very clear that there's no one higher than God, then there's a mentor, guru, or teacher that people have to respect and go to for advice. Then there's a husband, and then there's wife, and then there's kids, and then cats and dogs and roaches. <laughs> but we are trying to be equal. And women with the feminism move decided, no, we're going to even over jump. And by over jumping, men becoming more and more feminine. And men are becoming more and more scared to commit. Because why would they want to commit? if they don't feel respect. And the fundamental foundation of happiness for a woman is love and happiness, but for a man is respect.